we do things that go against the word of God. Understand? Okay. This is the end of part one. Thank you. God's side, God's on our side, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and any tongue that rises up against me in judgment has already been condemned and proven to be in the wrong. This is my heritage as a child of the Most High God. A thousand falls at my left side, ten thousand at my right hand, but no harm comes near me, for I only watch and see the punishment of the wicked. Amen? Ooh, it's awesome. God is awesome. Yes, deliverance is so important. Every Christian that plans to make it to heaven must go through deliverance, whether it's, whether it's a public deliverance or a private deliverance. We happen to do exorcism and deliverances all the time at people's houses that, are, uh, that don't go to church, the wealthy and the movie stars and the business people that don't want to step in a public place. They have church at their house and they call, they call us over there to... Uh, pray with them, have church with them, do deliverance with them, and it works, and their children. And then there's other times where um, we have it uh, in a private, the, where they come to our church and they don't want anyone else around, and we, we don't let them out of that room until the demons have left their life. And then, of course, there's the public deliverance where they don't mind, they come into the church building, and that deliverance takes place. Amen. And uh, the demons come out, that person cries their eyes out, the presence of the Lord is on them, and the Holy Spirit takes over. The demons leave the building, they leave their car, they leave their outside. Wherever they were planning on taking over, they're gone. They're out of that person's spirit, soul, and mind. So deliverance is very, very important. It's a must to make it to heaven. Speaking in tongues, being baptized, is not a must but deliverance is. Speaking in tongues, being baptized, is not a must to make it to heaven, but deliverance is. Baptism is a respect and an honor and a symbol of what Jesus did. A brand new beginning, my old is passed away, behold my new. Being verbally applied the blood of Jesus over you, just like they did in Moses' day. Speaking in tongues is a benefit. Oh, the benefits of speaking in tongues are amazing. The two main points, the devil cannot understand your language. He doesn't understand heavenly language. He was kicked out of heaven and that was taken from him. God understands. He cannot write down your prayer request when he can't understand it. Amen? And the other benefit to speaking in tongues is the fact that... that when we pray for something, we don't know the whole problem. We know what we understand, we know what we see, we know what we hear. But the Holy Spirit, who knows all, whose high, ways are higher than ours and greater than ours, He knows a lot more. And this is where He says the Holy Spirit moans and groans on our behalf. So when we pray in tongues, He, She, It, whatever you want to call it. Some call it the Mother of the, of the Trinity, some call it the, uh, it's the Spirit, it's the Spirit of God. We, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, then grabs a hold of the root of the problem because you now spoke His language where He can reach down and grab a hold of the root of the problem and pull it out and your trouble is over. So pray in tongues as often as you can if you, if you desire to go. That, but it's not a necessary thing to make it to heaven. Pray in tongues is a benefit. Why not use all the benefits? If you don't know how to pray in tongues, ask the Lord, show me. Get alone with God, and you pray on a lukumano shanda keli esi rakasha makapa makropa pa men pefe befe ye somoma moho kira takarare koto re somoma mahaka. Doesn't have to make sense. It's not supposed to make sense to the natural human language. It's a heavenly language. 
And then there's the diverse kinds of tongues, and the diverse kinds of tongues is speaking all the other different languages on this earth to be able to penetrate their life, their ministries, their their um, problems to dissolve them, and so the people listening will understand. God has diversified way to communicate with His people. He's spirit, we're flesh. And his spirit has to connect with our spirit. And if we don't feed our spirit, there is no connection. It's a break with God. Don't break with God. Read your Bible every day, especially after a deliverance. You need that healing process. Stay away from all temptation. Stay away from all negative people. Stay away from all skepticism and all um, um, criticism and Leviathan spirit. Stay away from all that. Allow your soul to heal and accept the deliverance that you just had. And then you have the strength to walk right back into where you used to be. Let's say a bar where you used to be, uh, you know, getting drunk. Let's say around people that used to smoke marijuana or do drugs, cocaine and crack and all the prescription drugs and everything out there. You'd be able to walk right in there and hate the sin, but love the person. Hate the sin, but love the person and want to deliver them. You can't give away what you don't have. And if you have freedom, you can give it away. If you don't have freedom, you cannot give it away. So always make sure you're delivered first before you fight the enemy. Because if the enemy knows that you're not delivered, they'll chew you up and spit you out. Don't do it. The life will get worse. So in the Word of God, get deliverance. And it's taught on several of the programs and the teachings and all the above. So it is one of the most important things to make it to heaven is deliverance. Through the blood of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Spirit, the whole armor of God and the word of God. The enemy hates it and he hates persistence. He can't stand someone that won't give up. He wants you to give up. It's his job to wear you out. But it's your job to wear him out and kick him out and keep him out. Amen.